the tapes. Is that all okay? Were you still recording even when the tapes weren't? You stopped recording altogether? That was such a. The camera was pointed this way. Oh, okay. We're using the other tape down the. The point at the screen. So look, all that really amazing example about David Hasselhoff, it's lost forever. <laughs> we are the only ones that know it. I'll put it in the exam and no one else will even look at what? Isn't he some woman or something? And no, no one will know anything. Okay, so, um, oh, okay, so I think that answers all the questions. The reason I like writing it like this is, although I could write it like this, and as, as we said, it's more annoying because this asks more questions. The real reason I like writing it like this is this enforces the fact that once I select one of these alternatives, I can't select any of the others. Now, under this one here, I know that's going to happen anyway. If it's a 6, it's not going to be a 7, and it's not going to be an 8. But later on, I might put some conditions in further on where there's a bit of overlap. And I'm, once I've knocked out it to 6, I don't want to keep going and running the other tests because it might pass some of the other tests. You know, maybe there's a, if it's not a 1 or a 2 or a 3 or a 5 or a 6, but it's an even number, you print hoople or something. This is not how Viking works. But you could see this would print 6 and then hoople. But the rule was only do it if it's not those numbers. And that's how Viking really works. The Viking really works if it's this, print that, if it's this, print that, if it's this, print that for the first 19 special cases. And if you do any of those, you don't do anything else. You stop as soon as you've done it. That's why the rest is in and else. But if it's not any of those cases, then we need to do something special. So we could write the program so it looks like this. You could write the program so it goes if, else, if, else, if. I'm leaving all the braces and printfs and things out. I'm just sort of showing the structure. Dot, 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 else, if, value equals 19. Yeah, I could run it like that. And then we could say else if, and we know now we're only getting, we're only going to be in this part of the program, this part inside here, if we're not one of the 19 numbers, first 19 numbers. And I might think, oh, okay, so I'm going to write all my stuff in here to deal with bigger numbers. And then once you've dealt with the numbers up to 20, you might have more else's. And, and, what would your program look if, like if you kept going this way? It would be a whole long thing of else ifs and would be completely correct. There's no problem with doing that at all. But what would you think of that as, if that was a program someone had given you as a birthday present? They said, oh, I've written you a beautiful program to speak Viking. Here it is. And it was just like 100 pages long, just else ifs. I would claim that's going to be a very hard program to read because for the first 19, they're all going to be doing the similar sort of thing. And then there's going to be a block down here where you're doing something quite different. And then another block where you're doing something quite different. And it's going to be all these different things all jammed together into one big long list. And it's not sort of going to make sense. It's going to be hard to understand. When we write programs, we tend to put things that do the same thing together and things that do differently but the same thing as each other together. And then we put those things. Does that make sense? We tend to group it a bit. So how we would probably do it is at some top level, we'd have the main function say, if value is less than this magic number, 19, because that's good, because we like writing less than or equal to 19, or, yeah, or, le or less than 20. Yep. Is that good to write numbers in our code like that? It's a magic number. It's not very good, is it? Shouldn't have done that. But I, what should I have done? I should have hashed to find that, shouldn't I? And I should give it a sensible name. Well, I don't know. What's the reason we're trying to test here? So we're not trying to test, it's special cases, yeah. So if this is less than or equal to the number of special cases or something like that, now that reads more like English, where number of special cases is defined to be 19 or something. Then do something called show special cases value. Oh, we're colliding with our other program. Does that make sense? <coughs> Else, if the value is less than, I don't know, what's the next group of things we're all going to treat in one way? Non okay, less than 
Oh, how are we going to describe that? Viking 100, I guess we could call it. You might want to think of a better name, which we'd hash to find. Then show, uh, show numbers less than Viking 100. Except, is that a good function name? Full marks for clarity, zero marks for length. Your job, should you choose to accept it, is to contain all this beautiful informative information in a function that's only like a <laughs> name that's much, much shorter. Okay. If you can't, leave it long. Don't throw away the meaning, but if you can throw away some of the letters and keeping the meaning, that's really good. Uh, value else. Now, the idea is now we go away and write our little special functions. And this function here is just obviously a boring 19-way if statement. And this function here does something else. And this function down here does something else. And do you see, the idea is that everything that does the same thing is all together. So there's one function here called shows special cases, that just does special cases. There's one function here that takes a number that's less than a Viking 100 and splits it into the two parts and prints the first part and then prints the T word, whatever that is, and then prints an awk and then prints the last part. Okay? Does that make sense? So this is what I mean by, we don't write it in one, one big program, we write these little specialized programs. Each of them just does one job. Even though put together, it's going to be exactly the same as if we mushed it all together. It's very convenient for when we're structuring our program to put everything in different areas. So this is sort of going back to your go-to thing. That's what you're achieving with the go-to, is with the go-to you get to jump into special areas that do a specialized task. You can do that with a function call. Put all the specialized tasks in a function. So if we wanted to call the function, how would we have to start the function up here? How would we define the function? What would we say? What's it going to return, this function? What does it return? Did we assign it into any variable? Did we say x equals? No, we didn't. What value is it sending back? Nothing. If it's not sending anything back, what's the point of the function? It's not doing anything. Um, it has a, um, has a side, effect. Yeah, side effect. And okay. what's the side effect? Um, prints, out. prints on the screen. So it's still a useful function, but it's not giving us any value. If a function doesn't return any value, what do we say? It, it returns a void. Yeah. So we'd say void shows special cases, and its input is an int called value, or whatever you want, it doesn't have to be called value, squiggly bracket, close squiggly bracket, and in here I'm in your nibs. Do we have a return at the end? No, no because it, what value does it return? None. Uh, void. Yeah. Yes? Do you have to say void? Yeah, if it's a void function, say it's void. Because what happens if it's a function that can be void? We won't have any functions that can be void and cannot be void. A function's only ever going to return one sort of thing. No, like, as in like, um, because, like, say you have a function that um, is used by another function as a side effect. Yes. Or by, or, but, but, but when it's used by itself, it doesn't have a side effect kind of thing? Like it has a side effect and, a, and an output? Yeah, look, if the function has a side effect and an output, but sometimes the output this, this thing here only ever talks about the output. We never care about the side effect. We don't have to document the side effect. Are you saying sometimes it has an output? It always has an output, but sometimes you don't care about it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, if you don't care about it, just don't assign it to anything when you call it. But the function, you have to tell the function what it's returning. So if it's returning an int, it always returns an int. If you choose not to use that int, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Scanf is like that, for example. Scanf, we found, does return an in. But remember, we never say x equals scanf. We just don't pay attention to that value it returns. Printf, for all I know, could return an in. Does anyone know if it does? I think we talked about it in the lecture. Didn't someone tell me printf returns an in? Yeah, how many characters are printed or something. Yeah. But we never use that. We just say printf. Yeah, we just say printf. We never say x equals printf. So it does return a value, but we never look at it. We don't care about it. So, yeah, you don't have to look at it. But you do have to, when you declare it, if it's going to return something, you have to write it up here. And your show special characters will never return anything at all, so we're going to write void. So you don't have to write a return In fact, we shouldn't write a return here. Oh, sorry, ask the question again. Did I miss here? So we don't have to write return zero. We don't have to return zero. Oh, return zero is only for main. Let's go back to our main function. 
our main function is defined as int main. So it must return something. So we have to say at the end, return some int. And zero, if you remember, means success. So if we say int main, we have to return something. If we say void main, then we don't have to return anything. But we're supposed to say int main. So given we're supposed to say int main, we're supposed to return something. Well, there are lots of good questions. Now, you guys at the back, you were the ones with the questions about this. Did this answer address your concerns? Yes? You're almost going to say something. Say it. No, it just says show special cases function. So, um, yes. How are you supposed to print it? Ah, well, the, the shows, you don't print anything out. Uh, show special cases itself does the printing. You, so, it's not going to return a value that we print out. It's actually going to do any printing it needs as it's running. And inside here, it's going to look like this. This is what it's going to look inside that function. So inside all these squiggly lines here, that I'm standing in front of, all these squiggly lines here are these squiggly lines here. So you can see it will print, it will use that print or it will call that print or it will call that print. So the function itself does the printing. And this top level function here, which is inside our main, This top level function here is not going to do any printing at all. It just calls other, it just, it's like the controller. It says, hey, you, go and solve the, it says, oh, it's a small number. You, print it out. Oh, it's a big number. You, print it out. Oh, it's an intermediate size number. You, print it out. A convenient thing about doing it this way is that you'll find that in the ones printing out big numbers, sometimes they'll suddenly need to print out a little number. So suppose it's a number over 100. Suppose it's 101. You'll need to print out 100 and and then suddenly you've got to print out the word one. Well, you could work out how to print it out, but what's it easier to do? <coughs> Call this guy. Call, show special cases, and he'll print it out for you. So it lets you reuse all that logic over and over again. Yeah, 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 absolutely. When you're in the middle of printing out a number bigger than a million, you're bound to suddenly need to print out 527,000. You've got a function that prints out thousands. Say, hey, print it out for me. I don't want to print it out. So instead, otherwise you'll find just typing the same thing over and over again. When that happens, it's always a clue that you need to look at it a bit more closely. And maybe you can pull the common stuff out into a function, and then each time you need to do that thing, just call the function and it'll do it for you. Like, for example, suppose um, I wanted to sing on the 12th day of Christmas. I could sing it all myself, but it's a really annoying. Suppose I, you're a function, and you sing and a partridge in a pear tree. Okay. Then it saves me a whole lot of work because I go, so your job is to print the third day of Christmas. All you have to sing out is, on the third day of Christmas, which your love gave to me, three something or others, two something or others, da, 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 da. And then you stop because he's lazy. There's no point in him saying it. He already knows how to say it. And you go, call that function. And you go, and a partridge in a pear tree. And then we call some other function, the function to print four. He just has to print his bit out. And then when he gets to the three, he might as well just call him. And he can call it out. So instead of everyone repeating over and over again, whenever you've got a sub job that gets executed more than once, give it a name, and then when you want that job called, execute it, just call that function. Is that overly cryptic, or did that make sense? Yeah, OK. So the, you guys, does that make sense for you? Yes. Good. Yes. 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 So is that how I can fix my 21 one? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You got it. So your 21 one, remember he said before we had this problem, that a 21 one printed out 20 and in words, but then it printed the number one? Because you'd printed out the 20 and, and you had the number one left, and you thought, how the heck can I convert that to words? But if you've written a show special cases function, you just go, show special cases one, and it'll print it out for you. Hang on, hang on, hang on, let me make sure he's got it. No, uh, value here that you pass into it, you pass an int in. Oh, you can't see it here. It's just a little int hiding in there. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it takes in an integer and prints it out. And that integer's got to be less than 20. So if I add that, if I add that on top of my program. So if you define show special cases, yeah. and then you're in the middle of printing out 21, and you suddenly need to print out the 1, 
Don't write all that logic you've written before again. Just go show special cases one. Or show special cases last digit. It's probably you've got a, a variable holding the number one in it. Is that right? Called last digit or something. Pass that into your show special cases function. Yeah, but the, the fact you asked the question was really spot on. That's exactly how you solve your, your problem. Your problem is you've worked out how to print the last digit and you can handle that perfectly. You've now getting to a two digit number and you've worked out how to print the front part and you're thinking, now, but how can I print the back part of it? And you go, it's so familiar. I'm sure I've done something like that before. If it's in a function, you have done something like that before and you can just say, use the function I wrote before to do it. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly perfect. How do you just say use the function? You, yeah, you don't say use the function. You say show special cases. Whenever you say the word show special cases, it calls the show special cases function. So he would just in his code say show special cases value. If value at that instant contained just the last digit, it probably wouldn't be called value at that time. It'd probably be, well, look, let's look at how he could do it. No, you have to tell it what number you want it to show. And, and let's look at how you can do that. I mean, because this is going to do with the modern div question that someone asked. Yeah, that's the modern div thing. So let's look at that. If you've got a number like 57, before you break it up, it's interesting to know it's 57. It's value. Maybe that's stored in something called value. We've got a, a variable called value, and it contains 57. We'd also like to have a variable called something like first digit, say which just contains five, and something called second digit that contains seven. Then 57 lets us tell our master program which subfunction to call. Oh yeah, I need to, it's 57 is bigger than 20, so I need to do something special down here. But in order to speak it, I need to be able to break it into its digits. So I also need this information, the five and the seven. So how can, given a 57, how can I break it into a five and a seven? Or in your case, given a 21, how can you break it into a 2 and a 1? Because once you've done that, once you've got the 1 by itself, you just say, if this is stored in something called second digit, you just go show special cases second digit, and it's going to print that number out for you. So if you can split it, you can print it out. So how can you split it? Well, we use modern div. Does anyone know how to do it using modern div? Yeah, and yeah. Okay, you say the first part, you say the second part. 21 divided by 10. Okay, 21 div 10 is going to give you your first digit. How many times does 10 go into 21? Two. So that's going to return two. So you go first digit equals 21 div 10. And that's now giving you your first digit. The last digit equals... 21 mod 10. Remember, mod says, what's the remainder after you've divided it by 10? If you take 21 and you divide it by 10, what's the remainder? Well, you've got two whole 10s with a remainder of 1. So the remainder is the last digit. OK, so you use this code to split your number into bits. Is everyone cool with that? Now, this is on the um, coding video, so you should watch that, because in that I show you how you extract middle digits and things as well. Like, well, let's do that now. Suppose I wanted to find the fourth digit of an eight-digit number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's just the same thing. There's nothing special. You just have to be, it takes a couple more steps. Suppose I want to extract the fourth digit, which happens to be, oh, counting from the back. One, two, three, four, five. That's a bit confusing, isn't it? Suppose I want to extract the thousands digit. Let's call it that. How can I extract the thousands digit? Oh. Anyone want to tell me? Yes. If I mod it by 10,000, so yeah. So I go value percent 10,000. What's, that, what's value going to be equal to at that stage? 
Uh, yep, the remainder after dividing by 10,000. So it's got that many 10,000s in it, and that's the remainder. So now it's 5, 6, 7, 8. And, but I only want the 5. How do I get that? Okay. Div 1,000. Yep. So pairing up mods and divs, you can extract whatever digit you want. And there's another way of doing it too. What's the other way of doing it? What's that? The 50, what do you mean? Oh yeah, for 21 you can just take 20. Once you get to big numbers, there's too many cases to think about like that. Yeah, you don't want to say if it's between 20 and 30 do this, if it's between 30 and 40 do that, because you're going to be repeating that 12 times, whereas this gets it in one hit. You say, if it's less than 100, div it by 10. That'll tell me the first one. You're just saving your time, that's all, just being lazy. What's another way of getting the five? Well, the other way of getting the five is, someone tell me. Yeah, divide by, uh, um, divide it by a thousand. Value divided by a thousand. What's that equal to? That's one, two, three, four, five. And then extract the last digit from that. Percent ten. Cool. What's your name? Sure. Well done, Sean. Um, so yeah, there's two ways of doing it. In fact, you'll probably be able to think of other ways, but uh, they're the two shortest ways of doing it. So does everyone understand mods and divs? Does anyone have a question about mods and divs? Do you reckon you could extract any digit you needed out of a number now? You've seen that sort of thing? You extract like 5,000, you've got to extract the one digit numbers. Yeah, um, I found when I was writing my program, I really needed to know, at, at, at some points, I really needed each individual digit. There were other points I needed the whole 5,000 of them. To, know, to say the word thousand, for example, yeah. but then I needed to know to say the word five. So at some point I needed to extract that one digit. So yeah, I'm not saying that's all you need is the digit. You'll need to know, oh, it's a number that's some thousands. But at that instant you suddenly think, well, how many thousands is it? Damn, I need that digit. <coughs> Easy. Div it by 100. That gives you that digit. Okay. Yeah, divided by 100 just so knocks three. Yeah, 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 yeah. Inside the individual bits of code where you, you'll know what you need. You'll know, oh, right now I need to know how many thousands that is. I'll div it by 100. Right now I need to know how many tens that is. Oh, okay, I'll div it by... I'll percent. I'll div it by 10. Yeah. Did I say telling you how many thousands it was was div by 100? I think it's div by 1,000. But yeah, yeah, you get what I mean. Yep. Uh, with the numbers that you use there, are they, can you leave them as magic numbers or do you have to hash to find them? Ah, good point. I'm going to leave that for you to think about. Should these numbers be magic numbers or should they be hash defined? That sounds like a good idea. Would yeah, yeah. we lose if we did hash defined? If you didn't, when you first write it, by all means, you're grappling with 5,000 new things when you're writing your program. It's going to be impossible to get every single new thing correct and perfect. And if you worried about it, you'd never be able to write anything. You'd be paralyzed for fear of, oh, I've got to remember that rule. Oh, I've got to remember that rule. So just get something working and then fix it up. And as you become more and more experienced programmer, lots of things become second nature. It's like when you're learning how to drive. I remember when I was learning how to drive, and the driving instructor kept saying, now don't forget to check in your rear view mirror, don't forget to do this, do this, he's saying, all right, now I want you to do a reverse park. And I'm so complicated trying to do this elaborate reverse park, he's going, are you checking your rear view mirror? And I go, no, bloody hell, I'm not checking in my rear view mirror, I haven't got time to do that. Boom, crash. Because the idea is, you can't, your mind can only concentrate on one or two things at a time. But once you become used to driving, you know, you're probably now, you're driving, you don't even you think, oh, I'm here. I can't remember getting here. I just thought I was getting in the car. It all becomes so second nature that then you start concentrating on all the small things and you start thinking, oh, I've got to check my mirror. I've got to, you know, talk on the phone, send a message messages. But you couldn't do that at first. <laughs> okay. It's exactly the same with programming. So when I'm talking about all these fancy things, look, if they're getting in the way for you, just ignore them. But at, but at the end, look back over your program and think, oh, okay. Because, um, you know, I would just start using those numbers because they're going to make more sense to you for, at first. And write your program so it works. And I bet you'll be halfway through your thing and you'll be, you've got it working to a thousand. You'll be feeling so happy and you think, I'm going to do the next step. I'm going to try for a million. Yeah, you'll be feeling all excited. And then you'll be writing it and then you'll be thinking, now, am I supposed to be modding by 10,000 or was it 1,000? Well, and you, suddenly you'll start getting confused about what you're supposed to be modding by. At that point, you think, it's a good time to think, oh, I should have given it a better name rather than just calling it a number. It should have been the number div by the number you div by to get the fifth digit, you know, would be a better name than 
because then I'm always going to, I mean, obviously I don't use that name, I made that name up. But at some point you're going to wish that thing had more meaning to you. When you start getting them all confused with each other, at that point you're going to give them more sensible names and, and you'll be happy that you have. But yeah. So do not kill yourself trying to get everything working all at once or nothing will happen. Yeah, yeah. Give yourself every success and victory you can. Don't worry about all the small things. But after you've written it, just naturally, if you keep these small things in mind, you'll actually find that they help you and, and you enjoy using them and they make your program clear and clean. No, well, that's a tricky problem, and I'm not going to tell you. I want to leave you some tricky problems. Hash to find it as anything you want. I bet 90% of people are going to call it 1,000. They're not going to hash to find it as anything. Okay. So that's fine. So, yeah, yeah. Only if you think of a name that's better than 1,000 should you hash to find it to that. And if you can't think of one, leave it as 1,000, because it's doing a good job. The, the, you know what? The questions I'd run through my mind, we're in this really arcane area now that's got really, it's a very minutiae of the assignment. If I was doing this assignment and I was staring at that and I was thinking, oh, I better give it a name, the question that would go through my mind is, what does that mean to me? You know, why am I divvying it by a thousand there? What, what's special about a thousand? And, and for me, really, it probably it is the number uh, I do to extract the fifth digit. So, you know, that wouldn't be a stupid name for me, but I'd be really unhappy I had such a really long, cumbersome name and I'd try and think of a, I think there's some simple concept hiding inside this complicated way of saying it. What, what is it I'm really trying to find? Yeah. But the question I always ask when I think of a name is, what does it mean to me? Why have I got it there? It's got a meaning. It's got a reason. Otherwise, I wouldn't have put it in the program. So let me just work out what that reason is, which is really hard, because you can never articulate what you're thinking. And once you know why you put it in the program, then normally the name comes to you. Oh, I put it in the program because it means this. So I'll call it that. Yeah. And if you can't think of a name, don't give it a false name. Just leave it sitting there. It'll come to you eventually. Hi. So, um, yeah. Oh, wait. I was going to ask about the day. Yeah, uh, let's just check. Uh, let me just check. I was just looking at the clock. I was looking at all the bits I've got here. I think, um, I think we've done modern div. I think we've done numbers greater than 100. I think we've done how to do task one beyond special cases in a lot more detail probably than the people that didn't come here thought we were going to. So aren't we lucky? Um, but hopefully that was helpful. Was that helpful? Yes? Not because I've told you how to do it, but I've just sort of shown you the, the way to do it, not, not what to do. Um, the way, just the way of thinking. Uh, and, and those other people can watch it on video, except that little bit where <laughs> we did that excellent David Hasselhoff thing. That, did, who thought the David Hasselhoff thing was the best thing about the whole lecture? Yeah, I mean, it just made everything clear, didn't it? it made, if you missed it, You'd be completely stuffed, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Who would attempt the assignment if they didn't understand? Yeah, no one. Just, oh, thank heavens we recorded it. <laughs> It'd be terrible if we'd lost that. That'd be, that'd be sad. Um, so I think we've done everything now except using functions. And we sort of did use functions a bit. Who was the person that asked for using functions? Let's find out exactly what you wanted to know. Who was it that really wanted to know that? It might have been a couple, just one of you. Wave at me, look at me, eye contact. No, no? Yeah, yeah. What sort of thing would you like to know about using functions? Yes. How to actually write the thing out. Is that what you mean? Do you want me to write an actual function on the computer or yes. rather on the blackboard? Yes. Yes? Yes? Okay. Let's do that. Let's write an actual function. Do you want to ask me the diary question while I'm doing that? Oh, why do you have to write a diary? Oh, man. It's just like I'm racing to school. We've got 10 minutes left. The traffic's heavy. I'm trying to work out what I'm going to do in the assignment. And 900 things are running through my head. And Gwen says, Dad. Why do women have babies? You go, don't, don't ask me now. No, that's a question that needs a long answer. Uh, so why do we have diaries? You tell me why women have babies. I'll tell you why we need diaries. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> um, uh, why do we have the diary? We have it for a couple of purposes. One is so your tutors can actually see how you're going as the assignment's going. Because they're actually keeping an eye on your diary. And if anyone's in trouble, they should be offering you help or keeping an eye on how you're going. They read it every day. They are able to read it every day. Whether they do or not depends on, on, you know, on how they all have different. They all care deeply about you guys, and they all have different ideas about how closely they should be involved day to day with you. But they, your diary will have been read by all of your tutors several times before the submission time. Yeah, absolutely. So, I, yeah, the diary's worth marks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a, it affects style, so potentially it's up to form. But I haven't finished saying why. You ask one question, then you ask another before I answer the first. You are just like my daughter. Dad, why do women have babies? And you go, well, it's a long... Oh, can I have a Nintendo? What? <laughs> I was answering the baby question. 
Uh, is that enough of a reason? Or did you want the whole reason we have diaries? I mean, we have elaborate reasons for having the diaries. Uh, okay, no, 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 okay. okay, I want to. Because they're good for you for various reasons. But you to ask me the next question. Okay, what about if you're the type of person that will be like, you, like yesterday, yes. I spent like the whole day yes. working on it. Good. So is it all right to write my diary, only write a few days? You, your, your diary, regardless of how you spend your time over days, yeah. doesn't matter how many days there is, we expect to see a, an assignment's worth of thought happening. Okay. So if you had, would, if, if you, well, I think the thing says like two, two, yeah, two to four. Oh, well, you know, like a page is like 250 words or something. I don't know, who does English? What's a page? A page is like 600 words. 600 words. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. So I basically write an essay for 1,000 Even though I've gone through life never writing a diary. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha! <laughs> and you know why we're doing it? The real reason is your English teacher rang me up last year and said he thinks he's gotten away. <laughs> no, no. Um, so you know what a page is? I mean, like two or three pages is just, it's not, no one's going to measure it. It's just indicating what we think. What we care about is in the diary, when we read the diary, we want to see what you've thought about the assignment as you've gone, the problems you've had, and how you've fixed it. And, we, and the reason we want you to write the diary, going back to the first question, is we want you to think about that too. It's called reflection. It's a really important part of learning, is when you do something, yeah. but you actually sit back and think, well, it sounds a pain when you do it, but once you get in the habit of doing it, scientists do it all the time. Every scientist has something called the logbook, or a mathematician, or an English person writing novels. Everyone has a logbook. They all call it different things in their professions. It's probably called a lab notebook in science or something. And you write down every idea you have and every thought is in this book. And then when you're stuck, you go back looking over the book. And when you can't think of what's gone wrong, you can go back and see, oh, that's what I did. It's just this really professional way of doing things. So a diary is the beginning of that. What we want to see is not only the final thing you produced, but the decisions you went through to produce that, which we call design decisions. It's possible you'll end up with a horrible assignment <coughs> but you'll have thought deeply about some really good things and that will make us all really happy and we won't care. We don't really care what you produce. We really care about the process you go through. So one student, well, it's a fantastic thing. The tutors and I are now sharing diaries. We've got little links saying, this diary's an obvious fail, this diary's looking like an HD, and we're starting to co share comments, so we're gonna classify our, make our grades all consistent. An obvious fail diary is one that says, day two, did a lot of work, had some problems, all working now, or day three, 90% done. Day four, 95% done. You're thinking, <laughs> not telling me anything. Um, so, so we look at, I saw one die recently and the person had said something really brilliant. Like they'd just been stuffing around all day, they hadn't got anything to work, they tried this and that, I could see what they should be doing and they weren't doing it, but I had this feeling they were gonna get to it sooner or later, so I didn't intervene. And they were just saying this and that and they were trying this stuff. And then at the end they said, it's really funny because whenever I, this happens and this happens. I'm thinking, oh, yes, yes. And there was this real insight into programming that they hadn't meant to say, but it's in their diary. And in a couple of weeks' time when they go back and look over their diary, or towards the end of the course when they look over their diary, uh, it will mean a lot to them. They will think, oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. Programming is about the process of programming. That's what we're trying to learn in this course. And to get that process, we've got to really analyze closely how we go about writing programs. I don't care about your Beyond program in the sense that I don't need a Beyond program. I already have one of my own, even if I wanted it. But what I care deeply about is I want you to be able to go from a problem to a solution, which is normally something you get stuck on straight away, and I want you to see how to do that systematically. So even if you're a self-taught programmer who already by hook and by crook has worked out how to do that for small problems, once you fully understand the process of solving problems, you'll also be able to solve complex programs. Problem. Yeah, yeah, it was a very long answer. You'll never ask me that question again. And, and <laughs> will you? Yeah. So been, yeah, it's exactly well, like when. Will you yes. like, care about my punctuation? And no, I don't care about your punctuation. No, no. And I don't care about anything. I don't care about anything. Yeah, I mean, your tutor needs to read it. So, I mean, Rupert's posted uh, for his tutor group, and you can probably see a sample of a diary he got years ago from someone who seemed to write it in lead. Like, took all their vowels out and deliberately tried to get their grammar wrong. And Rupert thinks it's the best diary he's ever seen. And Yeah, yeah, you've posted it publicly. Anyone can see it. Yeah. Now, you should check that with your tutor before you hand that in, because if someone handed that in to me, that would freak me out, because it would be very hard to read what they were saying. And I'd go, what the, what, what's that? What's a, what's a woot? What's a woot? And it just wouldn't make any sense to me. Yeah, yeah? So the expression, the punctuation, the grammar, the neatness, the layout, the setting, is only there to support your objective, which is to communicate with your tutor and yourself. 
if it communicates well and it's clear, then it's you know completely fine. Yes. Being clear, only you, only you need to write it so you use tutor and you, it's an exercise in communication. Um, the objective of the diary is the information it contains, not how it's presented. If how it's presented gets in the way, that's no good. Yes? Uh, does it matter if you add to your diary like another day, like, a couple, like say three days later you add to your diary? Don't write retrospective entries. Oh, damn. No, no, you can't do that. And that's why we like wikis, because we can actually log if people try and do that. And we do. So what you can say is, I forgot to write any, it's been three days since I've written in my diary. Oh bugger, because now I've finished the assignment, I'm stuffed. Here's what I can remember about what I did. Okay. Don't try and fake anything, because your tutor's going to go through checking the dates you put the stuff in. I was writing my diary at like yes. 3 o'clock last night, so I was very tired and I was like, I want to do this tomorrow, so I just left. I sure. put basic structure and I thought I'd come back and you, 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 do it, you do it yourself, you do it how you like, that's absolutely fine. No, tomorrow you come and say, I'm going to rewrite neatly, um, here's a neat version of what I wrote last night. Okay, so yeah, don't do anything false in your diary. We're not expecting it to be a work of art, so there's no problem about that. You don't need to go and falsify anything, but just write it as each thing as it's happening. Yeah. Personally, I find if I don't write the diary as I go, I'm a bit stuffed. In fact, I was intending to write a diary of this whole course this year, because I thought it'd be interesting to keep a, a track of the course and how it evolves for me as a personal thing, because I'm interested in teaching and various things, and I thought it'd be nice to know I tried this. And I keep thinking, every night I go home, I'm so wrecked, I think, oh, I'll write the diary tomorrow. For me, I should write the diary each day, even if I'm tired, because otherwise it'll never happen. Yeah, I've got a video diary. You know, what I'm really glad about is that we have a video record of that really funny joke about, um, David yeah, David Hasselhoff. That has been the highlight of the course for me. That's really cool. So you could get Rupert to keep your diary for you, if you want. That'd be fine. That'd be fine. I'm just being a dick. That's fine. Um, okay, so we're going to write a function. Let's do that quick and then we'll finish. Let's put the air conditioning on because it's getting very hot. Uh, yep, I'll do all that stuff. Actually, got to change technology all over the place. Mm. This computer's not. Uh, that's funny. This happened last time too. It's not actually detecting my laptop. It happened last lecture and I had to do the lecture off the rostrum. No. Oh, I can't show you my laptop. If it doesn't work, it's just for the laptop, it's just back on. First, I think you have to press the function key. See how you do output? Yeah, no, not with the Mac. Are you sure? Yeah. No, 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 I've told it to detect displays. Crashed it even there. Look, can't you change how your displays are presented? Yeah, I can, but it will actually detect how many displays are connected, and it does it automatically every time. It's not even detecting it's connected to this. There's something wrong with a cable or a connection somewhere along the way. Oh, sorry, guys. All right. Well, we'll have to do it on this annoying. But it's good for me to find out this before the lecture because I've forgotten that we had that problem last lecture. I'll try and get it solved before we have a real lecture. Let's go back to this very annoying way of writing programs using Pico. Um, okay. Uh, Pico, Pico, Pico. All right. So we're logged in. We're going to write a program now that has a function in it. Pico, and we're going to call it um, break test dot c. Uh, break, well, we're in the break, that's why I called it break. Break function, thank you. All right, now what function did you guys want? Someone, you wanted to, someone see, you wanted to see how to write a function, how it should look? Um, what about, uh, yeah, you got a suggestion? What's that, leap years? Leap years, didn't I set that as a tutor question? Yeah, that's in the yeah. 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 Yeah, I was just asking the question. Uh, you know when we print uh, 240, so it should be 200 only? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, so the problem is when you call the other function, it also prints 
I'll be not together with it. So, you know, because 240 has a zero at the end, so it also, when you call the other function, it also prints the not. Yes, so don't print, when you print out 40, you, you'll have a problem, you'll, you'll have a, if you have a problem with 240, you'll have a problem with 40, won't you? Uh, well, it actually prints out 240, but it also prints out the not because there's a zero at the end. Yeah, and it shouldn't. It shouldn't. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how do you go when you print out just 40 without the 200? You use the modulus, right? What's that? Modulus. You use modulus. No. Are you talking about a hypothetical program or a program you've actually written? Uh, well, I'm working on it. Right so you're not, but I mean, you're not describing its actual behavior. You're just trying to wonder what its behavior will be. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, no, because it was an unusual problem to have. You, you find you won't get that problem. The problem was, how come when he prints out 240, why won't it just print out 240 naught? And the story is, that's got nothing to do with the 200s program. That's got to do with your program to print out two-digit numbers. Your program to print out two-digit numbers has to be able to print out 41, and it also has to be able to print out 40 with no one. So your program to print two-digit numbers, no, actually, your, your uh, function to do that must not print out 40, 0. It must just say 40. No, actually, I've, uh, I've written part of it. So when, when I actually run it, it calls back to 0 because I have to go to the other functions. Yes. It brings 0 and it prints it not out. Uh, well, from 40 to 49, it works nicely, but also for the zero, it prints the not out. But if you print 40, does it say 40 or does it say 40 no, naught? It says 200 and then... Uh, no, 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 I'm not talking about the 240. I'm talking about just sticking 40 into it. Okay, oh, okay. Well, when you get a problem, always try and zoom the problem down. Yeah, so if the problem with saying 240, you're going to have the same problem with just saying 40. Get your 40 th program working fine. It's a special case, isn't it? When you... When you have a number with zero as the last digit, you don't print the naught out. So that sounds like an if for me. If last digit equals zero, do this. If else, do that. Yeah. Does that make sense? If you're going to have it say if, it, if it's zero to do nothing, mm -hmm. what, how do you do that in syntax? You just put the two curly brackets and leave it empty? Or oh, yeah, you could do that. Yeah, absolutely fine. fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absol that's absolutely fine. Did everyone see that? If you wanted to say if do nothing, what's do nothing look like? It could be just two empty brackets. Yep, that's completely fine. Did you have a question over here? No, no. Is there a question? No. I thought I heard a question. Yeah. Um, when I was in 20 to 30, yes. and if, um, if value is less than 30, and the two ends on, yes. um, value is greater than 20, yes. Yes. What I, um, so say example, we do um, 10%. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> when I type in 14, if it goes, okay, when I type in 10, it'll go 10, arrow, Yes. Okay, so you haven't got it inside an else. It's got to be inside an else. Yeah, show me after the break. We'll have a look. Um, okay, so we're just going to write a simple function, and our function is going to be uh, a program that um, asks for an, um, asks for uh, a number, and will tell you if it's even or odd. How about that? Does that sound like a good function to write? So let's write it like this. So we go, um, ham, 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 Richard B, ham, 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 date, ham, 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 test. Oh, I should write the real date. Because ah. if I don't, I never will. What is the date? 26th of March 2008, um, a sample program from revision lecture in break, demoing functions. How many lines? I haven't counted. Someone asked me that. It's it's not, it's not very long. Yours is about 200? Yeah. I, I don't know how long mine is. But I don't care how long they are. I just care how clear they are. You could easily write a 200 line thing that's unreadable. Oh, well, actually, we can find out. No, we can't. If the source code was here, I've got a little program that would run over and tell you how many lines are in it. I don't have the source code. I don't know. And th th that tells you how important I think it is. I have no idea how long it was. It wasn't very long, but it wasn't. It wasn't very short. I, I have no idea how long it was. I really literally didn't check it, didn't care. It was the right length. All I care about was... Yeah, if it's the right length, then what, how long was it? It, no. <laughs> <laughs> it, 
It was the right length because it was the length it needed to be to be as clear as I wanted it to be. So the right thing, the, the parameter you're trying to control isn't the length of the program, it's the clarity of the program. Yeah, different perspectives. Like if you're like a new programmer. If you're a completely new programmer, I don't care how long it is. If you're a new programmer, you'll write a really long program. No, I didn't say that. If you're, trying to, if you're writing a clear program, yeah. I'm really happy. Now, a long program is slightly less clear than a short program, but only slightly. It's only a hacker that thinks it's really important to reduce line length, and that's making a massive improvement to their program. If you wrote, a, you're, you've never programmed before, you write a thousand line program to, for this assignment, and it does the numbers up to a million, and can't do numbers over a million. And I read it, and it is so clear, and you're trying so hard, and you made little mistakes everywhere, but you, I can see what you're doing, I can see what you're trying to do. That's fantastic. That guy over there, he's been programming all his life. He hands in a 12-line program. It works perfectly. I look at it, it's a mess. I just think, ah! Okay, the length is not important, it's the clarity. And of course, if you're a new programmer, you're going to have infinitely more trouble than someone who's already programmed. I don't care about that. I'm not going to, really the marking has little to do with that. It will have something to do with that, because if you can't print numbers over a million, you obviously won't pass those tests, so you won't get full marks. But you can still get a fantastically good mark, and more than, no, nearly half the marks are for style. And it's, it's yeah, four out of, out of ten. But you can actually get 11 for this one. So you can presumably get, right, hand in a program that, that does nothing, that doesn't get anything right, and you'll get four out of ten. Okay, write it so it does the first ten cases, and the style is beautiful, well, it'll be too short to see what the style's like. But you know what I mean? You, you, it, yeah. So it's, the length is not important. I think everyone obsesses too much about the length. It's what you do with it that's important. Yeah. Okay. So let's include uh, 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 stud.io.h. Yeah, go. Look, please do go if you have to go, people, because we are past the time we were going to stop. Um, int main int argc char star argv. This will all make sense soon, by the way, which is really nice when that happens. And we're going to store our number int value. And then we're going to say um, uh, print f Please enter, oh I know, please enter your month of birth. We're going to print out your star sign. Oh, this is going to be such a cool program. Okay, here we go. Um, we're, now we're going to go scanf percent, percent D and we will just call it X. Is that good? No. I could call it value. What do you think of that? Thank you very much. What do you think of that? Does that look better? No, I might as well said x. What's value mean? Of course it's a value. It's an int. I knew that already. What is it? What's its meaning? Why is this variable in here? It's storing something that has meaning. What's it storing? The month. Is it the name of the month? No, it's the month number or something. How about we call it that? Can we just store the date if we're doing a star science? Yeah, unfortunately this is going to be completely accurate, isn't it? Right. Yeah. <laughs> this is Richard's shonky uh, horoscope program. Okay, so and then we're going to print, uh, and then we're going to like uh, show horoscope. Okay. <laughs> Okay, here we go. And then we're going to go return, zero, and we're done. I put the closing brackets in. So now we've written our main function, and it's going to call a function called show horoscope. So let's write show horoscope. Does show horoscope return anything? No, we can see we're not saying blah, blah, equals horoscope. We just run it. We don't store it. So it's not returning anything. So what's its type going to be? Void show horoscope int month we'll just say int month here just so I can show you that the variable names inside have to do nothing 
have nothing to do with the variable names outside. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to say something like if month is equal to 1, which is January, which is what? Aquarius? Capricorn. Print F. Oh, now I've made a mistake. What have I done? What's that? I don't have three spaces. Yeah. Look, above, how many spaces do I have? Four. Four. How many spaces do I have here? Three. That's no good. Okay. Better now. I should have stuck with three everywhere. I can't believe I started with four. Now I'm going to get that wrong every time. Okay, print F. What's the horoscope if you're in Capricorn? Who's in Capricorn? Yeah, do you guys have a good day today? No. Yes. yes. I, you, you will... What's that? Ah, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. we'll get to that in a sec. Okay, thank you for saying that. You will have a great day today unless you are Pamela Anderson. Otherwise, you will be dead. Okay. Now, that will only make sense to some people, won't it? Those people who saw that really amusing thing we did. Remember that bit we did? That was so good. Oh, there probably needs to be a space there. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Pico. Okay, so now we've done the horoscope for the first month. Now what about else if month equals two? Should put all my closing braces in now so I don't forget them. If February, who's born in February? All right. Uh, Aquarius? How's life going at the moment? Fine. Excitement in the future? Yeah. Or, or nervousness or what? Uncertainty. uncertainty. Would you agree with that? The future holds uncertainty. Yes. You'll have a great day. Your future holds uncertainty. But don't don't worry, it will be fantastic unless you are David Hassel. Hasselhoff. Why not? Why wouldn't it be great if you were David Hasselhoff? Because we don't know if he's a man or a woman. <laughs> because then you won't know stuff. Okay, we're just abbreviating it a little bit. Oh, that wasn't very good. What's that? Are you here, David? Uh, just oh, fantastic. We just discovered a problem with the ketchup. Um, yeah, there's a secret problem in one allows to know about. Ah. One? Yes, and everyone told me about it in the lecture. Oh, okay, that didn't happen yesterday. Okay. People complaining Oh, no, no, fix it up. So I made it. Uh, well, fix it up. Yeah, yeah. No, f let's fix it up so they start complaining again. Okay. And, and, and if they complain, just say, ha, 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 What's your name? What's that? Dylan. Dylan made me do it. <laughs> Is that right, Dylan? Yeah, yeah, he doesn't mind. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah, look. Yeah, but if it's broken, they can come into uni and use it or share test cases. There's enough time now that it's, it's okay. But you can, you can, if you wanted to, you could do that. Yes, and now the very last one uh, is just else. If you're born in some other month, Print F. 
uh, <laughs> smell. Unless you are Arnie. In which case you reek. No, we like Arnie. You don't. All right, so there you go. That was our hysterically funny program. You can just see now why we all like programming so much. Because could you think of a better way of spending your uni break than doing stuff like that? this. There we go. And now we're going to return, unless we already did that. That's fantastic that you came in and, and everything. Did you come in just because um, we found that? Actually, I came in because I was making the end by Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to, um, oh, I'm just about to run this program. There is always a uni break. It's not normally at this very stupid time. It's normally a refreshing time in the middle of the semester. And why do they make it shorter? No, it's always this short. It's just very early. No, I mean, why is this whole semester shorter? Oh, why is the semester been, why has uni term been shortened from 14 to 12? Because that's because you don't pay as much money anymore. You only pay 12 fourteenths as much as you used to pay. Really? Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> What? <laughs> because they ran out of money in Singapore? No, no, it's not because they ran out of money in Singapore. You distracted me, and now I've got twenty million error messages. <laughs> oh no, here they are. No, I, I don't think it's. Um, no, I don't think it's because of. No, it's not because it's not saving anyone any money. It's not saving us any money, as far as I know. But it, um, I, I don't know why we shortened it. I wished we hadn't. Is is my short answer. I'm sorry we shortened it because. Do you get paid for 12 and 14? Uh, yeah. Oh, hi. Um, yes, my pay's been reduced. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, now, okay, let's have a look at this. In the function main, I don't really, my pay isn't reduced at all. Um, break functions.c. In the function main, implicit declaration of function show horoscope. Does everyone remember what implicit def declaration of function means? What does it mean? Yeah. What would I do to fix it? I have to put that at the very top. I have to get the type signature and put it at the top. And that's called a function prototype. So let's do that here. Um, uh, there's a Pico hiding in there. I just get it. Now, we, we're all very sad that this term is shorter. No, show horoscope, uh, let's just have a look at show horoscope. Show horoscope um, doesn't return anything, does it? It just prints stuff out. It takes an int in, int month, but it doesn't return anything, so void's the right type. Now let's see what that error message said. We've, we've done the um, declaration at the beginning, which, which looks right, but we've still got an error message. Let's see, in fact, let me just, oh, uh, ooh. No. What I'm trying to do is just put some blank lines in, because everything was running together and it was confusing me. There we are. Ah, oh, now we've only got two errors. It looked like so many because we could see the old ones. In the function ho show horoscope, 36, expected declaration of statement at end of input. Yeah, okay, let's have a look. Number 36. What does that mean? Uh, to find out what number you're at, you type control C. I'm in line 28. 36 is the second last line. Ah, I see it already. Can you see it? The problem is the very last line. What's the problem? What's going on? No, 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 no. What's the problem with this? I'm missing a parenthesis. I thought I'd put my parentheses in. So now we know what that means. Yeah, I call them, I call them, I, you know, I'm just messing with your mind. Yeah, make sure you get it right in the diary too. Uh, yeah, they're called, they're called braces. 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 But I, I'm calling them parentheses, so I don't know why. Okay, um, so we compiled it, now let's run them. So it compiled correctly, oh sorry, so we should have just rejoiced there, a brief moment of rejoicing, Ooh. and now let's run it. And what did we call it? We called it break. Enter your month of birth. Uh, Glenn, when were you born? What month? January, thank you. Hey, you're gonna have a great day today. 
Okay. Well done. Who else wants to have a go? Who was born in February? Go on, you were. I know you were. What's your name? Nephi. Nephi. How do I spell, spell it? D E F Y. Oh, D E V Y? As in Devi? Devi. Devi. Okay. Sorry, Devi. You're allowed, it, it just takes me a while to work out people's names. Would you like to hear your horoscope for today? Yes. Your future holds uncertainty and bad spelling. But your future. But don't worry. It will be far. <laughs> Fantastic. Unless you're David Hasselhoff, because then you won't know stuff. Wagner. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's not that personalised. It should be Debbie, not Wagner. Where is Wagner? All right, now let's do one more. Who was born in Else? Eleven. Elsury. <laughs> eleven? Yeah. Yes? You're eleven? Uh, and I should know your name. Dylan. 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 Okay, Dylan, you were born in the eleventh. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so can everyone see what we did then? Let's just go back to the program. We just were demonstrating the program work, but let's just look at the actual program. It'll only take a sec. We're sort of done. The actual program consists of two parts. A main function, and that calls show horoscope. does a little bit of work, and then it invokes show horoscope. And it invokes show horoscope simply by saying its name. It has to give it a number, which is month name, that we already know at that point. And let's look at show horoscope. It's expecting a number. And it just does some stuff depending on that number. Now, if we wanted to do the horoscope twice, if we wanted to double the horoscope, here's how we do it. We couldn't have done that if it wasn't a function. We'd have had to repeat all those lines over and over again. But we can just call the function twice. And then we can say, we can even taunt them with better horoscopes. Yeah? See, we get to do the same chunk of work. This is the advantage of having functions. If you want to do the same chunk again, you don't have to write it again. You can just call it again. It's very powerful. So now it's going to say, your horoscope is this. Let's just say it once. Let's comment that out. Your horoscope is this, not that. Let's run it. Compile it. Run it. What's your month of birth? I'm born one. You'll have a great day today unless you're Pamela Anderson. Oh, I put the wrong ends in. Otherwise, you'll be dead. Oh, that's, a, oh, that's the worst program I've ever written in my life. Let's have a look. OK. See, we all, this happens all the time. You can all relax about it. What will I do there? There's just clearly too many of everything happening in here. Yeah, thank you. That's a good way of remembering it. To get a slash n. Do the one that's near the real slash end, the return. Enter your month of birth, one. You'll have a great day today unless you're Pamela Anderson, otherwise you'll be dead. Not your future era holds uncertainty, but don't worry. You see, we get to call, this is, uh, it's a stupid example, but we get to call the same piece of code without writing the same thing. So if you ever have a job you're doing over and over again, put it in a function, and then every time you do it, you just have to call the function. Now, the very last question before we've finished, I can't forget it, is your question, which was, what's your name? DJ. DJ. L. DJ. DJ. L. No, no, it starts with D. <laughs> I'm just going to say L. DJ. AJ. DJ. DJ. Sorry, DJ. What's well, something was L? It doesn't say, there's no, there's no link between them, is there? It's terrible. Um, I'm getting names bad today. Okay, so yeah, DJ asked a good question. Does everyone remember that question? It's back here. He said, look at this function. The variable in here is called month. But out here, it's called month number. What's going on? Shouldn't it be called month number in here? Now, it would work if it was called month number in here. But it doesn't have to be called month number in here. Because the story is that this function, all in here, I'm just about to highlight it. Let me get the whole thing on the screen. Oh, I can't. Oh, annoying. If I could get the whole function on the screen, let's just pretend I can. Everything in here is like private stuff. 
It just belongs to that function. And people outside this area, imagine I could keep highlighting right down to the bottom of the function. People outside the function cannot see anything happening in here. It's just completely confidential and private. So you can use whatever names you want in here and the people outside can't see them. And the reverse holds. Things in the calling function are completely private from in here. So you could give them the same name or you could give them different names and it makes no difference. They can't see each other at all. The only way they can communicate is through this. Something gets passed in, something gets received. It throws it month number plus one, it catches it and calls it month. Does that make sense? Two different things. With, they could have the same name or they could have different names. Yes? It does and we're not going to look at them for a long time. Maybe, but again only to make fun of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because with functions we won't need global variables. So, well, not to make fun of them, but we'll talk about why they're a bit dangerous. Yeah, yeah. Um, just in that one now, you're showing the functions and stuff. That's like in the main. In here? Yeah. Yep. It's in the main. Let me put the line on. It's in the main function, and that one will be put separate from the main function. Yeah. yeah. This here is the main function, and it's calling this function which is written separately over here, which would be down below. Yeah, yeah. This function I would write under here. And I would have to declare it up here. Oh, I'd get that error message. I'd put that one line in up here. Yeah, so it, the functions, you just list the functions one after each other. You put the main at the top. And if it calls any other ones, make sure they're listed down here somewhere. Don't write these inside main. Write them underneath. That's a good question. Yes? Um, with the task functions, you know how we don't actually return anything of importance? Do we actually have to put a void or can we just leave it in but not return anything? No. If you're not returning anything, say void. Say so void. we have to for style? Yeah, yeah. Because if you say int, then you have to return an int. Yeah, can you just write int return whatever at the end or do you have to just write void? I think, I think it's confusing to return an int for no reason. For no reason. It's like saying, it's like me saying, no, guys, 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 with your assignment, when you hand it in, at the bottom, you've got to include an envelope. And in that envelope, you have to write down your three favorite animals. And it's really important. You must do it. If you don't do it, your program won't compile. You'll fail the course. And then you say, why do you need that? I say, oh, I don't need it. No, I'm never going to look at it. It's confusing because now everyone's thinking about animals all the time and things like that. It's the same with this. Once you've said to the compiler it's going to return an int, the compiler's going to fail your program unless you return an int. It insists on it being there. And everyone's thinking this function's about an int, this function's returning an int, but we don't use, it means nothing. So m say what you mean. Always just say what you mean. And if you don't need something, don't say it. And if you do say something, really mean it. So computing's a lot about committing. You, you say as little as possible, but what you say, you really stick to. Okay. Yeah, yeah. If you have a reason to return an int, return an int. That's fantastic. And if you don't have a reason to return an int, don't return an int. And if you're worried you might need an int in the future, well, write it this way now without the int, and then when you need the int, change it so it needs the int. Yep. Guys, you've been very patient because you've been sitting here for two hours and you must be falling asleep. We'll take a break. You can ask questions. And when we'll, I mean, we'll finish. Not a break, a permanent long break. Um, you can ask questions. You can wander around. There's tutors hanging around. You can ask questions too a little bit if you want. You can use the labs. You can keep using the forum with any questions, and we're all monitoring the forum all the time, answering questions on the forum. Yes? Can you make it all in one page? Could you make it small enough to fit in one page? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you want to see it right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good idea. Oh, sorry. David had something you wanted to say. Sorry. You even told me, David, and I forgot. If any of you guys want to get Linux working on your computers and you want help uh, doing so, there'll be some very friendly people over here in the labs this Saturday uh, from 11 to 3, I think over in the Dell lab, so you just bring your computer along, don't worry about like a screen or keyboard or mouse or anything, just either laptop or desktop if you want to get Linux set up, we'll help you out. So that's this Saturday. Um, you, know, just um, you can get whatever you want, out of the default option is to do Well, thanks guys, that's really good. So you're essentially helping people put Linux on their machines if they want? Yeah. Well, if they already have a machine, is it going to destroy their windows that's uh, on the machine? Okay, so also, you should, okay, we won't destroy your existing stuff, but you should
shoot back everything up before you come. Yeah, yeah. Just in case something goes wrong. We shoot back everything up before you carry your computer out of your house ever. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. So if you've got a computer with some spare space on the hard disk drive and you want to have Linux as well as Windows, they'll install it for you, and then your computer at home will look like a lab computer, which is really convenient. You won't have to use Pico and Putty over SSH to do your assignments. You better just write it all at home. It will are you only doing it this one weekend, or is it happening um, at other we times? Have one in each semester. So you'll be able to do it second semester. If you miss out now, no worries at all. Okay. Thank you very much for doing that. Good old um, CSE sock. Th no worries. Good luck, everyone. It, it was completely my pleasure because I love that David Hasselhoff joke so much. It doesn't quite all fit on. Is it you that want it all on one screen? No, no. Oh, you want to take a photo of it? Oh.